the rest of the city looks pretty good. There's going to be a lot of quiet and plenty of room for the kids to play in. There aren't too many parks and swimming pools around my neighborhood. The kids are getting a good break at the schools, too. New buildings, equipment, books, and so on. This my school's pretty old. I haven't been out of my own neighborhood too much, but I guess what impresses me most in other neighborhoods is safe. There's nothing jammed up against anything else, and there's lots of room to breathe. I guess the city's a pretty good place to live in for most people. <laughs> I'm a junior in high school. This is my bedroom where I was born and I've lived here all of my life with my mother and my sister and my brother. Peter's the oldest. And Peter's that type that if he can't have it, all of it, he doesn't want part of it. So I guess that's why he quit school, because he thought he could do better on his own. He has very high IQ, but he's just lazy. But I think now he's coming to his senses, and he knows that he just can't do it without an education. Peter and I are only a year apart, and then Rosie and I are three years apart. She's the quietest one. She's the one my mother babies the most. She's the one we all have to take care of. I guess we get along pretty well because um, we don't fool around with each other that much. She goes her way and I go mine. She's pretty smart too. She got straight A's on her last report card. She's not like me and Peter. Like homework and stuff, I let it go to the last minute. But she doesn't. She comes home and she does it right away. Now that's something I definitely wouldn't do. And Peter definitely wouldn't do. My mother is the sole support of the family. She takes care of us good. Always worries about us. Sometimes it gets a little... You know, you get bugged and she's always telling you, do this, do that. She's just like any other mother, I guess. Only she's had it a little tougher because she's been the only one to take care of us and act like a father and a mother. People bring her clothes and material and she makes her dresses. She gets money for that. And then my neighbor, Let's her babysit when she goes to work a couple of days out of the week. In the daytime when we're gone to school, she does some sewing. And then at night after we go to bed, she stays up till about 2 or 3 o'clock. She works all the time. She wanted to go to college, but her father died and he wanted her to go to college. But her mother was that kind that thought the daughter's place was at home and all she needed to know was how to cook. She just finished high school. She didn't have enough education to get a high paying job. She wants us all to go to college. And everything she missed, she wants us to have. I bet she'd give her right arm to let us go to college.
given a single problem in textbook. All right, so the, in number nine, all you want to do is make a correction. I'd like to go straight from high school right into college. I know that with college, I'll try to take those type of courses that um, I can go into different fields dealing with people. I want to go to college because I want to be something that is really helpful to the people. Something that isn't just what everyone can do. It's something where I can help my own people. You know, half the girls, more than half of them want to be secretary. Beauticians or cosmetologists or something like that. I guess they've decided that it's no use, that uh, there's no use in them aspiring to become anything else because they won't be allowed to do anything else. Altogether, in all the schools I've attended, there's only been about a total of six white kids. Once, I went to a summer school at another high school where I was mostly Caucasian kids. They were pretty nice in the classroom, but outside it was a different matter. You know, like, we could, we got along in the class all right. We spoke to each other and borrowed pencils and paper and everything. And um, helped each other in our classwork. But outside, when they got with their friends, and I guess the same on our side, when we got with ours, it was, we sort of ignored each other. But I think it was more on their part because I used to try to talk to the girl that sat next to me on the outside and she would, you know, sh sort of shy away. I guess she was ashamed to, you know, be seen with me or something. But I didn't pay too much attention to it. <laughs> All of them seemed a little bit more confident of what they were going to do. You know, they were going to go to college. One girl was going to become an actress and everything. And on our side, there was sort of an, uh, you know, they were sort of apprehensive about what they were going to do. I guess that's because even I was, because I really don't know if I'm going to college. But they all seemed pretty sure of it, even the ones that I thought were real good. You know, they all seemed pretty sure that um, they were going to college, and I just took it for granted that maybe their fathers and mothers had the money that they could make sure they went to some kind of college. All these people that talk about what they say how dirty it is, how filthy it is, how much they want to leave. All my friends don't want to live here. Hate to say that they live in Watts. I think that's silly. They do live in Watts. Sure, everybody wants to get out. I don't. I think I want to stay here. But I don't want to live like I'm living right now. But I think that if Watts is ever going to be anything more than it is, it's going to take people who stay here and build it up. After all, if everybody just starts moving out, those that can't move just stay here and live like they, their mothers and fathers lived. It's not going to do any good. I know they need some place to have those things, but they don't have to have them right behind houses. How would you like to have a bunch of cars right in your backyard? So what if some kids get out there playing and they pile one car too high and it comes crashing down and there's no place for it to crash but right into the yards? And I think that's dangerous, and I don't see why the city allows it to be like that. 
those people, even if they are living in a, in a, a run-down neighborhood, that still isn't any reason for them to have to live with stuff like that right at their back door. You live with your mother, and you see what your mother has, and I guess you figure, well, if she didn't make it, I know I can't. So you just give up before you even start. I think maybe that's what happened to a lot of the uh, adults. You know, you, s you see all these men hanging around on the corners all day long, doing nothing, playing checkers. They just don't care anymore. Perhaps it's too late for the adults, but it's not too late for the young generation like myself, 